Hey, y'all. How are you tonight? <laughs> kind of short notice. Oh, uh, let me get pulled up and then I'll explain why we are live on Thursday night. I've got to get my account swapped over. Oh. Here we go. Michelle had this on Celebrating Appalachia again. She was watching their live. I missed their live today. I actually forgot all about it. And I was busy outside. So, oh, my channel. See if we can get, oh, where we, there I am. Oh, Walker's Big Game Adventures. I am doing well. We just got done eating. Uh, I experimented with a new meal tonight. Oh, uh, some experimental cooking. Trying to keep, I try to keep the background somewhat clear. Oh, um, and we just got done eating. I cooked some Fiesta chicken. We called it. Oh, uh, she marinated it in lime and whatever else most of this evening. And the reason we done that, she went and bought a huge box of chicken. Like her and uh, some other folks went in together. And they went and got one of these big deal things. And, like, you can get a good price on, like, a box full of chicken. And there's a lot of lot of strips and stuff. So we decided to cook. And then I just experimented with that corn. Uh, and it's basically rotel with lime, chili, green chilies in it. I added some jalapeno. Cut up onion and green onion and something else I added in with it. But anyway, that corn, was, it, it turned out good. And we sprinkled lime juice across that. So we was just doing some experimental cooking. So I didn't film cooking, not to mention my phone was dead. I've been watching YouTube videos today while I was making pottery. So the reason we are live tonight instead of Friday night like normal is I'm going tomorrow late afternoon to stay with a buddy of mine down on the Ross Barnett Reservoir at the campground. And we're going to fish probably tomorrow afternoon late. And then we're going to fish Saturday. And I'm going to be down there all day Saturday. And we're going to cook Saturday night. I will be late getting home Saturday night. So I won't be able to do a live tomorrow or on uh, Saturday. So uh, we was talking about it and decided, hey, we will go live tonight. And I realized there probably won't be a lot of people on here. It may do better tonight. Who knows? Uh, I know we're already late. It's already 830, so I'm not going to go two or three hours. 10 o'clock is usually my cutoff for like, okay, that's enough of going live. It's time to go to bed. Uh, you know, these folks, hey, we better go to bed. These folks might want to go home. Um. So that is kind of what's going on. I've been out here today. The The picture I posted a while ago, you see my wok sitting on the... I got a cooker that I've been working on. I changed over to a different cooker out here because I am, I am looking for the cooker I want, and I can't find it. Um, so I've got this cooker set up to do my one burner cooking on for now because the wok will fit in it better. Uh, it's got a little bit bigger burner. So what I am looking for is I want a like a camp shelf, two burners up high with a drop down third burner for large pots like cooking crawfish, boiling whatever, boiling peanuts, all that stuff in a large pot down low. And I want a jet burner on it. So more than likely, I'm probably going to just do like I always do. I'm going to get on Amazon, order the burners I want, and then I'm just going to build what I want. And uh, it'll be better off that way. So that that may be what we do. 
because I, I carried the, the large basket fryer back over to the cabin. We had a big fish fry Monday. Fed a bunch of folks. Some of y'all came, ate with me. Uh, we ate and, and cooked a dish pan full of fish. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I got, John, I got these new boots on. Y'all, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I know, I know well because I think the same thing. You see somebody do a review on something and they go to bragging about it and they think, oh, well, that's just because somebody paid them to do it. Well, y'all, these things are comfortable for shoes. I, it, and right now, I'm not going to wear these like from now on all the time. I like to go barefooted. Barefooted is my number one thing. I like my church shoes. But this sloppy wet weather, my leather church shoes, I call them. They're Cole Hans expensive shoes. I gave $5 for them. But leather, you keep getting it wet, wet, wet. You're constantly trying to re-cure it and re, you know. It's it's made to get wet, handle the weather, but it's not good on it just to be slopping in the mud. Not in my opinion, anyway. Uh, so I am going to wear these in this kind of nasty. I mean, the ground out here is like spongy. It's, you walk on it, it's just... It, it's bad. So, uh... That's the reason for wanting these. So after I got them and started wearing them, I'm like, man, I like, they comfortable, you know? So foot just, I mean, y'all foot slides right in them. You pop them things off. Now my socks probably got a hole in there, but I can literally stick my foot in there, grab this tab in the back and pop it on one so I, I, I'm a fan of that. <laughs> ain't no tight, and they're tight enough that they stay on your foot. They ain't like trying to fly off, but this stretches enough. It ain't hard to get on and off. So I'm digging them so far. Uh, Rebecca, don't you get in trouble now missing out on them events. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jimmy, we're going to go down there. We're going to be at Goshen Springs Campground. And uh, they have a camper set up there. And we're going to, uh, what it is, my wife and his wife, we all go to church together. They've got to do some decorating. There's a, a young lady getting married here in the near future. And they're doing a wedding shower, such as all that. Then women's going to be able to, so he's going to be down there by himself. He said, hey, you want to come stay with me down here? We'll go fishing. I was like, yeah, I, that's exactly what I like to do. So we're going down there, and we're going to have a good time. So we're going to go up and try to find some pockets. We've had a lot of rain. It's not going to be – I will be filming some of whatever we do. Um, but there's a lot of fresh water, so it's probably not going to be ideal fishing conditions. It is also uh, going to be windy. So probably be limited fishing places. So we'll make the best out of it. I tell you what I do like. I get to sit in the back of the boat and just fish. I ain't got to fight with no trolling motor. I ain't got I like that though. Uh, Crawfish normally Friday at 7 is when I go live here, which would be 8 your time. Uh, but like I said, we jumped ahead. We, we're doing it now, and I just kind of done it on a whim. It is bad late. Uh, we won't be doing very many this late, not starting this late. Now, I'm usually still going this late. Um, but I... Um, I just wanted to, I knew I wasn't going to get to do it, and I look forward to doing the lives, y'all. I enjoy sitting here talking to you guys and and uh, answering questions and just chit-chatting about whatever. I'm, I'm trying to get this outdoor kitchen set up. I got a lot of work to do, but I'm, I'm experimenting. I, I got another... Um, rusted rusted skillet that I, I went and got today and a dutch oven that was just i mean it was nasty 
holding water, had pine straw in it, and I cleaned it all up. It's hanging up over there with my other ones, and I mean, it looks like a brand new skillet. And I did them all on that fish cooker as I was testing doing it. So that is what I have been doing later this afternoon. And uh, then I decide, we decided to cook out here, and I seasoned on my Blackstone some more. I have about got my Blackstone like I like it. It is just about, I, I cooked on it. It is as seasoned as it has ever been. Uh, it needs a couple more coats, and I hadn't got a couple of corners just like I want them on it, but I'm ready to get everything set up. I want to put a sink in over there. i got to get my refrigerator around here. When I get all of that done, I'll be where I can cook. I have got to do some, i got to get my other light put up, and then I'm going to put some more lights. I don't know what all I'm going to put for lights. I'm not a fan of this fluorescent white light. I like the orange, yellow, old traditional style light because I like the look that it gets. And with that light, I can tell about my food. If it's this white fluorescent light, I can't tell what's what with it. I don't know. I just ain't, ain't no fan of it. I, I mean, it's better than nothing. Don't get me wrong. I ain't against it. So anyway, I just wanted to come out here and sit down and chit chat and uh, let y'all know kind of what was going on. I have slowed down this week. I've been working on getting pottery orders done so that I could go fishing this weekend and I hadn't filmed as much. I hadn't tried to put out videos. I've got where I pull the limb hooks up Monday. Y'all, I pulled all my limb hooks up Monday because we had more fish than we knew what to do with. And uh, I knew we had rain coming. I think we wound up with around two and a half, three inches of rain for the week. And river is back in flood stage, which I knew it was. So that is why I pulled everything out. But I, I caught, I think, around 20-something catfish when I pulled my lines out. And I was running about... 20 something hooks i had about five hooks that did not have a fish on them and two or three yo-yos i had three or four fish i caught on my yo-yos that was that's the first time i have ever fished yo-yos i have got some adjustments to make on how to put them how to set them uh, you know i mean as far as placement and stuff but they worked well i caught fish um so that is a little bit of learning and we're going to go back and at some point I'm going to go down there and camp out and take just the yo-yos and fish that backwater provided the water is right. Uh, them lakes, backwater lakes have to have a certain amount of water in them to have catfish in them, but them catfish kind of run up in there and do some of their spawning and stuff. Crawfish, I, I don't, I don't mean y'all. Please don't take this the wrong way. I have had people get concerned about my, I don't know the way I view things. You know that I, I guess they think maybe I'm a little full of myself. There's very few things that I am honestly afraid of. Um, it's not that it can't happen, and I'll tell you why I'm not afraid of stuff. There's no sense in living life in fear. I, we're going to all die at some point. It's going to happen. And I really trust God to see after me. Um, but no, I'm not afraid of alligators or snakes. or. I, and, and now when I was younger, I was. Um, but now I've never had nothing try to get into bed with me. And a lot of my camping, uh, I sleep on the ground in the wintertime, but now summer when the creepy crawly critters is out, I do mostly hammock camping. In fact, I got new hammocks of bug nets that I have not even slept in. And I'm wanting to go, y'all, but the problem is, is everything stays flooded. The whole time that, like right now, any chance that I've got to go down there and spend a night, it's out of the banks and flooded. And and uh, so with that being said, there's no chance of a you know something getting. I have been asleep in a hammock and had something go right under me. I don't know if it was a coon or an armadillo or a possum or something. It was walking. It wasn't a snake. Um, but I you know I just stayed still and it went on about its being. I woke up, heard it walking in the leaves. It was in the fall of the year, and that's been several years back. 
Uh, and I just haven't got to do a lot of camping that I want to do. Um, Mudcat, I could see, I watched, uh, I watched Duke over there at Rough Cut Homestead catch crappie on yo-yos. Uh, I, yeah, I could see where with some manners, that'd be the way to, that'd be the ticket. Uh, me and Brody had a good time in that boat, Jenny. We, uh, he's learning, and I am so looking forward, y'all, to taking a camping trip to Tom Bigby, and I'm not going to fool with my big long lines because they are entirely too much work. Y'all seen me film doing them. Uh, I want to go do them now, uh, but I'm itching to go over there and just put jugs out, which I'm, I'm probably going to put Gatorade bottles because I've got this big bag of glow sticks, and I want to put the glow sticks in the Gatorade bottles, and I'll just tie my limb hooks onto the end of the bottle and throw them out there. And, and we're going to sit out there in the boat late at night or late in the evening into the night. And I want to watch Brody hook them. I'm going to make him a hook like a chicken catcher. Basically, it's a long pole with a narrow hook in there that he can hook, hook them lines and pull them in and let him pull them jugs. And I'll just drive the boat and chase them. But we've got to get Brody a brand new life jacket. His red one that, that's new that I've got him is too little, which he's growing. That's part of kids. Stuff lasts about a year, and then you got to trade it off and get something new. Um, so the other day, I had to put an old life jacket because the one that I put on him was the only other one I had that would fit him, that would buckle, that had a strap that goes between the legs. And for me... That is a huge criteria because if Brody falls out of the boat and falls into the water, I'm going to get up close to him and grab that life jacket and drag him back over in the boat. And I don't want Brody sliding out the bottom of it. When I grab that, I could get excited and jerk it too hard. I mean, you know how that's going to be. Um, and I want to be able to grab that life jacket and drag him back up in the boat without worrying about him sliding out the bottom of that life jacket. So it having a strap that goes down in between his legs so that it catches him is is a must for me and a life jacket for him. Uh, I don't wear a life jacket a lot. I should probably. Uh, maybe on the big water, I will when we're doing some of that stuff, but Brody has got to have one on because, number one, he can't swim yet. But anyway, I'm looking forward to going up there and doing that. I think that'll be a great video. The only problem I have with it is it is hard to make good videos at night. So I've got to work on some lighting. I have rigged up some lighting. My boat now has LEDs all the way around it so we can light up and see everything going on in the boat. But I don't know how well that is going to be for filming. So we'll just have to see. Martin Brody, Brody didn't want to play checkers. I, we was going to play the other night. He wanted to get the chess board out and play chess. So we played about a half a game of chess. And that done him on that. He he figured out real quick that there was way more going on than he could keep up with. And I'm not so good at chess myself. I love chess. I'm just not real good at it. Oh. JL327. I hope I have good luck. Uh, a lot of my fishing this year has not been great luck, but lake fishing is new for me as far as crappie goes. I have been chasing crappie on lakes for about the last five or six years. I did not grow up lake fishing crappie. That is new to me. I grew up in this swamp down here. That is why I can go in this swamp and be successful at whatever I do in it. Um, but you know, I'm trying to learn new things. It's, I had some people get concerned that, oh, we don't want to see a bunch of lake fishing. I want to see you in the swamp and I, I want to be in that swamp. The problem is like right now it's flooded. There's no going down there and doing anything. When that water is up and swift, you're not going to catch nothing. So that is the reason for getting into Tom Bigby river, big bulk part of the Pearl river down there. And some of the other lakes is because you can go fishing there. Um, 
Now, the weather has changed. The bite is probably not going to be as good. But it's like somebody on here already said, better than working, go fishing. Uh, I, and I, I love to fish. I'd rather fish than I have hunt. But now, I want to hunt. I'm, 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 at least this year, hopefully my buggy will still be in running order. And it won't be down for the count during hunting season. So I've, I've, I'm going to get a barrel ordered for the muzzle loader. I want to get it dialed in during the summer. We're probably going to do that mid-summer and get that dialed in. Um, I may pull out the compound bow this year and do some serious bow hunting because really that is my best chance of killing a deer. And me trying to kill one with a recurve bow is... Is doable, but I've not had great look at it yet, so I don't know. I could I could make a little longer shot with my compound, I think, so I don't know. We don't have trout here. Um we don't have perch here either. We we I, we call crappy white perch here. Just what everybody right here has always called them. We well know they're crappie. Uh, but we don't have a, any kind of trout that I know of. Larry, you have finally scratched around up there and found some dirt. You know they sell that dirt at Lowe's in a sack. And you can go out there and pour a little pile in between some of them rocks and plant you some potatoes in there. Talking about potatoes, let me tell y'all what a guy told me this year. When I was looking for potatoes, I stopped and talked with a fellow, and he's a pretty good gardener. He said, well, he said, I fill up an old tire with, with dirt. He said, and I plant my potatoes in it. And he said, when they get up by this tall, he said, I break all the leaves off, he said, and I pile dirt all the way up over them. He said, and they'll sprout and come up there. He said, and I stack another tire, you know, when they, when they get up, he said, I put another tire on them. I missed that part. I, I, I get excited. He stacks another tire on there, breaks all the leaves off, fills it full of dirt. Well, they grow through it, and that makes a, a ring of potatoes. He said, when they get a plant up about that tall, he said, I stack another tire, break all the leaves off, and cover that with dirt. And he said, I, then I start unstacking the tires. He said, I got potatoes going everywhere. He said, I can take a handful of potatoes, he said, and grow a sack full of potatoes. I've never thought of that. Makes sense. I have seen putting them in a tire now. I've just not seen continually moving them up. I have seen planting them in a hay bale and stuff. But that may be something somebody up there like you, Mr. Larry, wants to try. Um... It's, uh, I have not gotten excited about gardening yet this year. I, I just, I don't know. I want to fish more and I want to hunt. But now, I'm going to tell you, it starts warming up and the ground gets warm enough to actually plant some stuff. I'm going to go at it. But it's just so much work and I don't know how to not work so hard <laughs> That I ain't looking, I'm dreading it. I dread the amount of work that goes into it. I, and I'm going to not do as much this year, but when I ever start, I got a tiller that's got to be worked on. I've got one of them fixed, but I, my big tiller, I need to get it. Something ain't right with the that part. I put a new gear in there. Something in there is loose. That shaft is moving around. So I've got to tear it back apart and see what's up with that. And, uh, the tractor, I've got to drag it around here and get it running and get the clutch unstuck. Once I do that, then I can go to planting full force, but I, I, it's just the amount of work that goes into it that I'm dreading because I want to fish. <laughs> I want Another thing is I want to be able to leave and go camping and spend a night and film videos on adventures and... If I got stuff here that needs to be seen, it's like tomorrow. When we're gone all, well, I'm going to leave tomorrow afternoon and then be gone all the next day. I'll have to feed the chickens good before I leave, and they won't get fed Saturday probably unless I can get my daughter to feed them. 
any plants that's here that needs watering, uh, who's going to water them? You know, I mean, if you leave and stay gone two days, will you come back and, and stuff's dead? That's why I had not put any eggs in the incubator. I just, I just hadn't done it. I won't. <laughs> and then I've been planning on going camping, I, like, since February, and I ain't made it do that yet either. Diana, they, they, I seen somebody use a square bale of hay and they, they, I'm assuming it was like an old half rotten bale of hay is what I think it was. It, I don't think it was like a brand new, we just went and bought a bale and planted. I think it was a bale they had set out maybe the year before and decorated for Halloween and left it sitting outside all year. And it was partially rotten, and then they stuck their holes down in it and shoved potatoes down in there, and they grew up, and it they grew potatoes in there. So I I hadn't never tried it, so but I can't see why it wouldn't work. I keep hearing dogs howling somewhere. I'm trying to figure out where they at. Anyway, Brenda, how are you tonight? Brunswick Mower Supply. I doubt I'm going to turkey hunt. And my reason is, is I don't have a good place to turkey hunt. This swamp has a few turkeys in it. But as it floods, all the turkeys leave and go out to the surrounding fields they will come back in there is when the water recedes and stuff starts sprouting, but right now it's flooded again. We had like one week that they wouldn't water everywhere, and right now it's back like a lake again. And it, it may not be quite like a lake again, but right now all the low water crossings and stuff are full of water and you can't get anywhere very far down in there. So um, probably not turkeys in it. And, and that's really the only place I have to turkey hunt. I don't have, there's so many people around here that turkey hunt. Every field and every, every farm has is about spoken for. And if there's a turkey moves around, there's five people following him around with in their trucks trying to shoot him from the side of the road. And I just, my turkey calls has been froze in a Ziploc bag of water I put in the freezer for the last three years. I ain't even thought them out. You can, your mouth calls, you put them in a Ziploc bag of water and freeze them and they won't dry out on you and you can, they'll be good the next two or three years later. See you later. Good night. Jerome Smith, good to see you. We don't have morals down here, morales, however you say that. Is it moral, moral? Anyway, we don't have any here. Uh, every now and then, there'll be a random one pop up somewhere. I think last year, I heard of the first one ever being found in the county above us. So it's possible here, but not a lot of hardwoods. Um, I, it just, it's about, about the only thing that, that we really have an abundance of is chanterelles and um oysters and obviously the medicinal like turkey tail grows like rampant we have a lot of mushrooms but as far as stuff that i forage um i have picked and harvested chicken of the woods a few times and i'll be honest with y'all i think it's more hype than it is i i like to eat i'm a decent cook i'm not gonna claim to be a great cook and I, it's a lot of work to make one of them. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I'd rather cook than a, than a chicken of the woods mushroom. Uh, now, oysters is by far my favorite to eat. Um, chanterelles is the best to saute. So those are my two favorites. If I'm going to pick mushrooms, those are the two I'm looking for. Puff balls, I have cooked them to You know, I made the pizza-like thing on top of them, and that was the best but I could have put it on loaf bread and it would have been better. So, you know, I mean, I to know you can eat it is good to know, but 
to go hunting it to eat is it's not worth it to me. Now I've never eat a morel. I've heard they're very good. Don't know. I've never tried one. Turkey nuggets would be good, Lisa. They um, uh, my brother used to be big on turkey hunting. He was good at it. And that was back in the early nineties, and I remember going over there and eating with them turkey nuggets, and they was fine. But I just, if I had a good place to turkey hunt that. The turkeys weren't getting molested and drove by and called to and shot at and all such as this. I might would turkey hunt. Uh, but now I'll tell you what happened. The last time I turkey hunted, we were in a deer camp and I had planted crimson clover and done some preparations to, to turkey hunt. And some of the more wealthy people in the club had some young teenage boys. Well, I think one of them was married, a little above a teenager, but still in the early 20s. And they, uh, we were called, we were up there on the, there was like 2,000 acres. We're up there, had found a turkey, was parked on the side of the road, had walked into the woods out in there where the turkeys were, was calling to the turkey, and they pull up out there and slam the truck doors and go to making a bunch of racket and start calling and just trying to mess us up. And as mad as I got walking back to the truck, when I put my stuff in the truck, I said, this is it. I am not fighting nobody for a turkey. I don't even care much about turkey. The turkey fried turkey nuggets are good, but they not worth fighting people over. And I put my turkey vest on a nail in there that afternoon, and I ain't had it back off that nail. I'm not, it, when it gets like that over stuff, I, I'm out. That ain't why I'm in the woods. I'm, I'm in the woods to enjoy the experience, to relax, to, not just relax, but to enjoy the creation. And if I got to fight other people to do it, I don't do it. That's why deer hunting is not my number one thing anymore. Deer hunting is getting cutthroat like that. It's all about money now. And I, and most people are doing it so they can brag about how big a deer they killed. If I kill a good deer, I want to take a picture of it and go, hey, look at this nice buck I killed. I'm proud of it. That's okay. But that ain't why I'm there. I'm there because I like back straps. I'm there because I like to saute a steak off of a hind quarter of a half-grown doe. I, that's why I'm there. I like ground deer meat. I like to eat. That's why I'm there. And it's peace of mind in that outdoors. And if I'm having to fight somebody for it, I'm out. I'm not going. So that's turkey hunting has kind of done me in there. Brenda, I did sneak in there tonight. Uh, we're going to be gone fishing the next couple of days. So we decided we'd throw a live tonight so that we get time to do it. Jimmy, I'm ready to go frog hunting. They, the season is open, and uh, I, w I would love to go down there where me and you was fishing in that backwater. I guarantee you these frogs. There's too many alligators right there for it to not be frogs in there. Alicia Stauffer, how are you tonight? Crawfish, that chicken of the woods... If you fry it, you can make it taste like fried chicken. If you put all the salt and pepper in the batter and all that, you can eat the batter off of it, and that batter tastes just the same as the batter on fried chicken. But now inside of it, the mushroom itself ain't that great. Surviving in Alabama, welcome. Welcome to the family. Oh... The puffball was by far the worst mushroom I've ever eaten. Um, I it just I don't know. I, <laughs> I could I'm telling you when I cooked a puffball mushroom, I tried to lay it on that black stone and just like heat it up, sear it like, saute it, butter, see how that worked. It literally smelt and tasted like a wore out sock. 
I ain't kidding either. Bread of them horns is good for making knife handles, but now Mr. Charlie Pickle has sent me enough that I can make knife handles for the uh, for the next ten years, and I don't need to kill and not, and with the deer horns I already got, I just I don't know I. <laughs> And, I, and mounting a deer, I probably won't never mount it. I'd have to kill a show enough hoss to want to mount one. I can't. I just, I mean, where are you going to stick all of them? If you get more than two or three deer heads on the wall, it looks plum tacky. I mean, I ain't going, I ain't lying. And I know they, some, some of y'all probably got deer heads all the way around the wall. Put them out there in your garage. Put them out on something. But if you got deer heads on every corner of the wall, it, I mean, that just, to me, it just looks tacky. <laughs> Appalachian Explorers, it is about like taking a bath on Friday, ain't it? Knowing you're going to get dirty again. Darlene, I'm glad you got some shirts. VA, I, I like foraging, and I'll tell you why. They, one of the reasons I started fooling with plants and foraging and, and searching for medicinal plants, aside from the obvious benefits of having the plants and using them, was the adventure of something to get in the, out in the woods during the summer months. Um, I would be on the water, I would be in the swamp, but I wouldn't be out walking the land looking for stuff. I would just be in a boat, in the water, and that was what we'd done in the summer. So, you know, looking for plants gave me the opportunity to get out and walk around and see what's growing and learn. And I have learned so much in the last four, five, or six years on that that it, it blowed my mind what all was there. Yeah, pork chop, them 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 kind of people is the very reason that I don't turkey hunt. I maybe one day I will have a place that I can turkey hunt that I ain't gotta fight other people for them and I'll go back to turkey hunting. Uh turkey hunting is a lot of fun. I'm not real good at it, but I never had an opportunity to get good at it. Never had an opportunity to to work turkeys and, and learn that craft uh, just but from not having nowhere to hunt. And uh, anytime I did, I did have a place to hunt, and I finally killed a gobbler. He had about a ten and a half inch beard there. Called him up. I, I hunted him about three or four different days, and and finally got set up right and got him to come to me and killed him. And after that, they was them them people's family decided they wanted to turkey hunt then, and they had never turkey hunted, and so that shot me out of the saddle on that deal. So. No, them, them horns, they, they ain't near about good as about a 75 to 100 pound doe. And I'll tell y'all this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be country. Some of y'all going to frown on it. Y'all hear the coats? Coats is cutting up back there. Um, one of my favorite things to eat off of a deer is one of those big muscles out of the hind quarter and cut me a steak about an inch to inch and a half thick and lay it on that black stone right there in some butter and cover it with some garlic salt and lemon pepper. Oh man, and sauteed me up some onions to go with it. Mm. Man, I love fried backstrap now. Don't get me wrong. I love fried back, but man, that, that, and cook that thing about, you know, still medium rare to rare, it's fine eating. I'm telling you it is. Shawna, yeah, I'm loving these boots. These, these, these are the Clyde Hoppers now.
I've never had a, a morel, so I, I cannot speak on a morel. But now the the chicken of the woods and the puff ball is by far overrated. Now I, they they are edible. I can make a meal out of them. I can show you what to do with them, uh, and you can eat them. But to sit here and brag about how wonderful it is, mm, can't hardly do that. John Thomas, that fish knife, you're going to fall in love with it when you go to scaling fish. And the first time you dig a, a, a hook down out of a brim's mouth. Now, crappie, you can get your finger in there and pop it loose out of a crappie most of the time. Some of them are hooked a little worse and you need the, the thing. But a brim, you can't get your finger in there. And if he swallows your jig or you fish him with a beetle spin or such as that, that's where you gonna fall in love with it. Now, let me show y'all something now. On that scaler, now I just got this knife. I, I got that on eBay, missing a medallion. I don't know if y'all can see, it's got a little man right there with a fly rod. What's it say on it? I can't read that. Anyway. When you're using that scaler, don't stand it up like this and go to scratching. If you do that, scales is flying everywhere. Lay this down like this. It's tapered right there for a reason. And like you filleting that, just like you cutting and you just go up under them scales and them scales will still be laying right there. And you can take your hand and you can just wipe them off the edge of your table right off into your gut bucket. And you ain't got scales in your hair and in your ears and all over your shirt. I know some of y'all are a love a spoon. I grew up using a spoon. I've used several different scalers. I've used the backside of a knife. And you stand up and you're scratching and scales is a flying everywhere and they all over. The... That's what I don't like. And I haven't used the, the dish pan of water method um. I could see where that would work, and that is a good idea. And I'm when I get some brim and I'm going to scale a bunch of fish, I'm going to try that. Um, but now, right now I'm filleting and cleaning everything, so I'm not just scaling a bunch of stuff. So I, I wouldn't go and run a dish pan full of water to try it just for two fish. Canned any fish. I would like to try. I'm thinking about smoking some fish to preserve them. I don't know. Had you messed up, Triton? Thought it was Friday. Crawfish, I got that book. <laughs> I already got that one. Hey, y'all, I found a couple of books at Tractor Supply. I didn't buy them. I, they was a little proud of them, but I'm going to wind up getting them because I love books. One is edible mushrooms, and it's got recipes all through it. So while we're talking about cooking mushrooms, there is a book at Tractor Supply, and I, don't, I wish I had a way to link it. I looked through it, and it was an excellent book. And they had several foraging books and stuff, so you might want to check your local tractor supply around there in that little square thing with all the books on it. They was like $20, and then one of them that I was interested in was like $24, and then they had the ball cannon book. They had a lot of interesting books that I had not seen at tractor supply. So you may want to go by your local tractor supply and just investigate some of them foraging books and see what's in them. You might be interested in some of that. But I've got that Indian Herbology of North America. And it is a good book. I, I do like it. John, I have put deer neck in uh, in, in a crock pot and, and cooked it down. I have cooked it down in a Dutch oven. Um, yeah, I it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Now, I do not do this with a buck that is in rut like late in the year normally i just do those because they some musk glands when they swell up 
and get a big old neck. There's a lot of meat there, but it, it has a strong taste. Now, it can be beat. You can you can cook it in such a way with enough seasoning that you can eat it. It ain't hurt nothing. It's just not as good. I'd rather have a doe's neck, smaller, but you know, personal preference. Um, somebody, we was talking about canning fish, and you probably, all you could do with canned fish is make, like, salmon patties. You know, we buy the canned salmon sometimes and make salmon patties. You could probably do such as that with it. Um... Don't know. Uh, I, I would love to experiment with it. And that is one of the reasons, going back to this outdoor kitchen, I want to get the two burner set up with a drop down burner is because I'm going to do a lot of my canning outside. It's so hot in the summer and it gets hot in that house and it's hard to cool that I don't want to run an oven half an afternoon trying to can tomatoes and can this and can that. So, I want to do my canning out here, and that is that is one of the things that I want to do. Philip, I'll tell you what else ground deer makes, and that's that taco soup. That is what we eat this past Sunday. My wife cooked a big old pot of taco soup, invited folks over to eat, and we didn't tell them it was deer meat till it was about half through eating, and they couldn't tell the difference. Uh, but now we can our deer meat with... Uh, I mean, not can it. We we grind our deer meat with beef tallow. <laughs> There's y'all's hero. Come over here and set up on this stump. Hey, you don't have to monkey around. Come over here and see it. You did. You were doing a live like I wanted to do. Yeah, he do wanted live. to do a live. Yeah. Get up there and sit on that stump, and you can talk to him. But don't. You ain't got to monkey around and make faces the whole time and show out. And try to keep your finger out of your nose. Gobble. Charles Lucas, Gobble. I'm glad you made it tonight, brother. Hey, we uh, Cindy, we can chanterelles, uh, pressure can them, and we just use the the. It wasn't the ball. I've got a different hey, canning book in there, and uh, I use the recipe for regular mushrooms to can them, and it it worked good. We've had them. I canned them in small, like, half-pint jars, and we pull them out and use them in soup, stews, this, that, and the other. And, and I, the ones that's in there has been in there two years, and they still good. So it worked with that recipe. I have never canned any meat, but now I am planning on canning some here before long. Don't hit me in the head with your hands, please. I'm not going to do another live this weekend. That is the reason I'm doing a live tonight. Tomorrow, I will be at a camper with my buddy, and then we're going to fish. We may even run jug lines tomorrow night. And then we're going to fish all day Saturday. We're going to cook Saturday night, and I'll be on my way back home tomorrow evening. So we won't be live no more this weekend. Would you be still? He, he can't help it. He can see himself on this thing that's delayed, and it really... <laughs> Brody, are you a fisherman? Are you the net man? Yeah, and I'm an alligator hunter, too. T hey, get up here and sit down a second. I want you to tell them. T tell them who you, who's the alligator hunter. Agnes Moses. Well, how does he catch them alligators? Knocks him in the head with a stump. Knocks him in the head with a stump. <laughs> Y'all, he done fell in love with old Amos Moses. Sit down on him, son. Old Amos Moses was a Cajun. He lived by himself in a swamp, hunted alligator for a living. He just knocked him in the head with a stump. Why was he so mean? I guess he wanted to eat him. No, he said his daddy would use him for alligator bait. Tie a rope around his waist, throw him in the swamp. Louisiana bait, alligator bait in the Louisiana bayou. <laughs> Jeff, I wasn't expecting to do one either, but we got through eating off that black stone and got our belly full, and Michelle went over there, her and Brody, to her mom and daddy's and look at his new truck. He ordered him a new truck. And uh, I said, well, I think I'm going to do a live because I'm not going to get to do one the rest of the weekend. We're going to be on Ross Barnett fishing. And 
I wanted to do a live. I miss y'all so much when I don't get to do a live during the, on at least one during the week. So I said, we'll just go ahead and do it tonight. Y'all, Brody, he can't contain himself. He's 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 a bit wound up, but we ain't got no. Well, yeah, we do have chipmunk here. I've never eaten one though. There, we don't have a lot of chipmunks. Let me put it that way. I have only seen a few, and we have a few flying squirrels, but they small, and you don't really see a lot of them either. Shannon Herb. Good, glad you could join us. Brody, it, it ain't, uh, you don't think you need that shirt on? He's doing that alligator chomp. He, he ain't get out from under my rocking chair now. I don't want to squish your toes there. Be mashed them down to pudding. <laughs> All right, look. I don't want you looking at this. He can't, he can't behave. What am I going to do with him, y'all? <laughs> hey, them coyotes is out there hollering a while ago. Tell them what we're going to do here in a little bit. Get a rat killing. We're going to have a rat killing, he said. How are we going to do it? We're going to shoot him in the head. We're going to shoot him in the head. Yeah, in the nosey. <laughs> well, who's going to hold the light? Me. I'm the light man and the net man. You're the light man and the net man. He's yeah. got it figured out. Brody, truck, truck, sit down truck, over truck, here. Look, truck, you can't truck, talk, truck. monkey. What kind of truck Papa get? A white one. A white one? Yeah. Snap, snap, snap. He ordered a new Honda truck. Oh, they get good gas mileage, and he's, I don't know, he's liked them trucks, so he went, I don't know, they went to Meridian, I think, and ordered Dad. it. Dad. That's what he wanted. I heard a T Rex out there in the woods. We we'll send him. Think about it like this: yeah, yeah, there's probably yeah. as much meat yeah, on a chipmunk yeah, as there is yeah, on a crawfish yeah. tail. <laughs> and I and and yeah. and think about what folks yeah. is paying for yeah. them this year. Yeah. Brody, can you eat up your weight and groceries? <laughs> Martin, I don't know. We cooked that chicken a while ago, and and he didn't eat enough of it to save the dying rat. <laughs> Brody, are you going to put the rats in a cooler? He said, <laughs> come over here and sit down. These folks trying to talk to you, and you showing out so bad you don't know what's going on. <laughs> I told him I was going to take him over to the bridge and put him out if he didn't behave. Hey, you going to put them rats in a cooler? Yeah. You going to eat them? No. Yeah, I'm going to cook them in that, we're going to saute them in that disc blade. You want to eat them rats? <laughs> well, I seen some old boys on TV, they eating them. They just put them in the fire, hair and all. You wouldn't eat one that way? <laughs> I ain't going to say I won't eat one, but you going to know I was bad hungry if I do. <laughs> Yeah, Lord. I ain't gonna eat no rat if I can help it. But same way with the possum. Now, y'all, I have heard all the old timers talk about possums and feeding them out on corn. They'd put them under a wash tub and lay a brick on top of it with a pile of corn under there and let him where he couldn't eat nothing but that corn for a few days and clean him out and I but still. I <laughs> I just can't eat no rat. Now I could probably eat Nutra. Nutra is different from a their, from a rat out here running around. I've eaten beaver, so beaver and Nutra is pretty close. Dad, uh, I was peeing on camera. Don't don't talk ugly. You behave now, Jeff. If you eat Nutra. Shannon, we've got some uh, frog gigging videos. Now, I don't think I have actually done a frog cleaning video. Uh, yeah, I usually... 
We don't hunt alligators. We don't have alligator tags. And y'all, I think I missed out on applying for an alligator tag. I think they've done that in February this year. So I was pulling it up online looking at it, and I think you had to apply in February, and you had to apply as a two-man team. And I don't have a partner. Um... So I don't know. I got to do some more research. I could probably go with some people if I want to. Go put them firecrackers down. You scattering them everywhere. I mad boom, them don't boom, even work. You boom. left them out here in the rain. Boom, 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 boom. Cindy, I don't doubt it. Hey, boom, don't don't boom. nothing surprise me. Boom, boom. I wasn't paying attention. Did you pee pee on camera? Now why? Look at me. Sit down. Sit down right there and look at me. Get up there and sit down. Sit down. Look. Don't be being ugly. Okay. I won't let you be on camera no more if you're going to act ugly. Look at me. Don't do that no more. Jeff, I, my uncle told me a story when he lived in Bay St. Louis. There was a friend of his that had a bar down the road. Get down from there. If you don't straighten up and act right, I'm going to send you in the house. And he said that he, uh, he'd go down there to that little bar and hang out. It was his buddy that run it, and he said it was closed, but he said he would go down there and sit and hang, talk with a guy they were friends and he said he went in there one night and said he had, it was during the week and they wouldn't open for business and said he had a dishpan sitting there, had meat fried in it, and said they were sitting there talking and he said, man, I said, get your bite of that. Eat women. So he said he eat a piece of two of it and said, man, it was good. And said he finally said, what is this? He said, Nutra. And he said, boy, he said, I done eat it. He said, he said but it was good. <laughs> Yeah, I love, in fact, we're going to cook some squirrel here pretty shortly. I have got a bag in the freezer that I just stuck in there that's got to be cooked here pretty quick because they're going to freeze or burn. There's two ducks and about three or four squirrels in a sack in there I had killed on a hunting adventure, and I have got to cook them. So I'm, I'm trying to decide. I was watching Emerald Lagasse today on Emerald Live do some duck videos. I'm trying to decide how I want to cook it, but I'm probably going to just go back to my old tried and true recipe that I know I like. I usually pull just the breast out and cover it with barbecue sauce and put it on the grill. But I've got the whole duck, so I may put them in one of these Dutch ovens and just put all of it in there together and cut up a bunch of vegetables and do it that way. Um, and I may make me a, a, a roux to put it in and do it like a Cajun-style dish. I don't know what I'm on. I'm going to figure something out, though. But we do got to cook them here pretty quick. Here, the alligator hunting, Larry, you have got to catch the alligator on a pole, rod and reel, and reel him up to the boat. You've got to get a snare around him with a I snare can't. pole or a lasso I rope or whatever. Hey, Hang on a second. And you got to get him secure to the boat, and then you have to dispatch him with a bang stick. You cannot, I don't think you can even have a rifle in the boat with you. But I'll tell you why. I went last year with some, with a couple. Well, there was four of us in the boat, and we was on Ross Barnett Reservoir, and they was boats all over everywhere. You couldn't shoot out there because, I mean, they was people everywhere. Now, there's areas up here that you could do that in, but you can't make it legal in one area and not here on another area. I mean, it's, it's just easier for them to say, it's easier for them to say just don't do it and uh so you can't shoot them here what i ordered the alligator game you did yeah. from where um 
them. He thinks if he looks at stuff on Amazon, he's ordered it. I ordered that on Amazon. It comes with the fish. Yeah, Jeff, I have heard that a lot. That uh, Because they allow us to sell raccoons to people to eat. Uh, I don't think you can make like a market out of it. But if you sell them amongst neighbors and friends or whatever else... I don't think they really have a problem with it, but I, I don't know that it's just legal. I think they just kind of look the other way type deal. But I've heard that, that yeah. when you're trying to sell them, if it ain't got a foot on them, they won't buy them because people were trying to sell just anything as a raccoon and they needed to know what it was. So I, yeah, I've heard that too. I didn't eat a lot of snapping turtle. I have eat a few, but not big on it. But I, I, I just hadn't eat a lot of them. The one I ate was all right, but it was a huge old turtle. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with why it wasn't as good. Bobcat is delicious. Uh, bobcat, when it's cooked, almost looks like chicken. It turns really white. Um, I, bobcat is really good. So, yeah, yeah, Bobcat's good eating. Try it, and I don't, the snakes down there don't bother me. Uh, most any account I, encounter I have with snakes, they're headed in the other direction. So it's not like they're down there like chasing you or getting after you. If, if you're making racket, they headed in the other direction. Alligators are the same way. So I don't worry about them. Now, I do watch for them. I don't want to, if you step on one, he, he would probably bite you. So. I do try to be careful. Now, I have pulled up a string or a red bellies or a brim, and if they small, I have pulled it up, and they be a cotton mouth hanging on the other end of the string or a fish. We can kill snakes. Uh, I don't hardly shoot them anymore. I, when I was a kid, I shot every snake I saw. Now I'm more of a, I'll just let them go. If, if they come up here around my yard, I'll kill them. And if I go down there, and this is like a real popular fishing spot, like it's really padded out, and that's where a lot of people fish, and there's one there, I'll kill him there because I don't want a kid to get on one. Uh, but now, if I'm off down way away from people in the swamp, I'm not going to kill him just because he's there. Uh, I just, I don't know. It don't, I, I, I don't feel the need to kill everything I see anymore. I, I'm more of, they not bothering me. Let them, let them do their thing. Uh, I don't know. I just. Jeff, I've I've had an alligator come up beside us in the canoe. Now, uh, if y'all would go back last year and look at my frog gigging video where I was in the canoe by myself frog gigging, you'll see my alligator encounter there. He came up. He was probably about eight foot long. I was in a 14 foot canoe and he he kept going in front of me, and he got he made me as nervous as any animal in the wood ever. Ooh. Mm. He made me as nervous as any animal ever has. And uh, he kept, he would sit there and wait for me to go by in that canoe, and then he would dive down, and I could see the run of bubbles, and he'd take off in front of me, and then he'd be up there waiting on me again. And the third time he done that, he come up when I when I got by him, he dove down and come up and slapped the bottom of my canoe. And I think he was just trying to see okay. what it was. Yeah. He was Look. what you got? Some kind of a lightning bug. Just hold it up for the camera. Well, they can't see it like that. See it? Yeah. Come up here closer. He has caught a lightning bug. Look at it lighting up. Oh, Brody did good. Don't mash him. 
And show it to Mama. Go show it to Mama. She'll be so proud. Take it right on in the house. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord. But anyway, anyway. That that alligator, though, he scared me about as much as any of them has ever scared me. And I got that all on camera. I didn't, obviously, you can't see him hitting it all, but I got on away from him, went on and hunted some other places. Uh, talking about frogs, <laughs> y'all, I've been cleaning up out here. I was working on this fish cooker and seasoning a black stone, and I got my coffee pot sitting over my percolator pot. And I was going to clean it out. I had left coffee grounds in it from the last time I'd used it. And I was dumping them out. And I, I inspect my stuff because it sets outside. I look at it pretty good. And down in the very bottom of the spout part of that old coffee pot, there is a frog, little green tree frog nestled all the way down in the bottom. And I filled it up water. He's still in there. He would not come out. So I, I just left him over there, set it up where I, as uh, soon as I get him out of it, I'm going to put boiling water in there and clean it good, but he ain't, he won't come out of there. So that's my, my frog adventure of today anyway. I'm sure his mama in there is, uh, he'll have it bashed before we can put that in a jar. He still got it on his finger. I see it blinking through the door. You want to put it in a jar? There's a jar right here. It needs washing out. I emptied this jar. It had jalapenos in it. They ain't hearing me. Triton, I have... Well, I hate to say it like this. I shot at a panther. Um, not a black panther. It was a tan panther. But that was years ago. It was back in our running limb hooks at night and drinking beer all night days. And I had the light and I was shining and he, I seen that thing out there and I seen that big long tail and he was huge. And uh, I shot at him and I did hit him. But uh, that is the only one I have ever seen and he was tan. So he was more like a mountain lion. I've never seen a black panther. Uh, but now I knew that they were in there. Oh, well, I got the yawning. Um, they used to call it the wild woman of the woods here. And, yeah, but they ain't got no air, has it? You got to get one you can poke holes in the lid on, ain't you? You got it? Where's he at? I don't see him. He's right there. Oh, he's in the top. Oh, I see him. Yeah. All right. Now you got to go. Where'd you find him at? Right there in the grass. Like you going to go find your nothing and put in there with him? Yeah, it's right there. That well, you go hunt your nothing down. I saw him down and blinking, but he's blue. But anyway, they used to call it the wild woman of the woods out there, and it was because you'd hear it scream out at times and... And man, you talking about make your hair stand up? Ooh. I it, I promise you, it sounded like a woman down there that somebody was murdering her. It'd make you... <laughs> oh. If you didn't know what it was, it'd make you get your stuff together and head on back to the house. Jeff said he has seen one. I have heard of people around here seeing them. Yeah. I, you know how I caught that bug? How? I saw him blinking and I called him. Yeah, well, go do it again. <laughs> Let's see another one. I if I can catch you got to stand real still there and watch real close to see one blink. I don't see very many out here. Usually you see a bunch of them. I can get down in the woods on when it warms on up and they'll be everywhere. So anyway, hopefully y'all sometime in the next week or so when it gets, it's going to be up in the 80s, 
I don't like to get in the water at night when it's cool like this. It's just a little chilly. Um, and I'm going to get down there and we're going to do some frog grabbing. Mr. Jimmy said he wanted to go. So I'm going to probably get the canoe in there. The canoe seems to be the easiest way to get around in there and catch frogs. Yeah, them screech owls is another one that'll make you eerie. And I have seen what they call glowing stumps. What? I have, we're going to have a wet killing now. Okay, well, get over here out of the way where I can finish my live. When we get through a live, we'll do it. Yep. You going to knock them in the head with that stick? Yeah. Hmm. I thought you was a light man. I'm the light man and the stick man. I'm both. And the, I'm the oh. big, big guy, and I'm the stick man and the light man. Yeah. I'm both. You light man. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, I lost my train of thought. We'll start all over again. <laughs> I'm good at losing my train of thought. I got me a lantern here. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to get down there and catch some frogs here pretty quick. I enjoy doing it when it's warm enough that I can get around in there. And, and I want to go to some different places where we can use the boat. I'm, I'm wanting to do some bow fishing. I had never done that. I have seen the, I've seen the game and fish here make post on Facebook swearing that Black Panthers don't exist. Um, and you know, th th here's the f the factual part of it. With all the game cameras and game video we have now in the woods, I would think we would get more footage of some. But, you know, you don't see a lot of people showing white rabbits in the woods. And I have seen a white rabbit in the woods. I've seen a white squirrel in the woods. I've seen albino things. Now, you see a few albino deer. But, you know, when you talk about stuff like bobcats and, and these other things, if there is an, I mean, the chances of there being an odd colored one is possible. And... I don't know why I can't quit yawning. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to say they don't exist because, I mean, I, there's no way to know. And they, a lot of people that say they have seen them, you know, I. the next thing is the chances of there being, a, like Black Panthers, a lot of people talk about the Black Panther if it's a, if there's that many black ones, there would have to be a species of them just about it. And I have seen some large, dark animals in the woods, but we've got a lot of pigs, and I have not seen nothing close enough to have identified it to be a cat, in other words. Um, what did I find? What have you found? A piece of a rubber band. Go throw it in that garbage can over there. What garbage can? So, you know, I mean, I, I definitely ain't going to say they don't exist because I don't, I don't know that. I, too many people have said they've seen them. But I had not never seen one, I, and I hadn't really seen a clear photo of one that, that I, I guess to know that was like a real, wasn't a, a photo opted photo, but... The next day, I know what I was going to talk about. I I have seen glowing stumps. Is what somebody commented. Um, rotting wood is called foxfire. I have been sitting on a deer stand before daylight and see something glowing out there, and I, what? And I I didn't know if it was. I guess it's the mycelium. That's when it's got mushrooms growing on it. Was what was making it glow. 
I don't know, but I did see so um a glowing stump one night down there, and that I mean I, that had my full attention till daylight. <laughs> Nor I'm gonna have to say with the Bigfoot deal, I, I just I don't I can't say he exists. Mommy. Mom, we have a rat killer in this. Oh. Um. Found twenty plus pounds of that? fat wood. I I got I probably got a hundred pounds laying in my yard. There's a pile of it right over there. Where are you going? Where'd she go? I can't find. Hello. Are you doing your laugh? There's old Roscoe. Roscoe's been in trouble today. He he washed some of Brody's toys last night. He's got a shirt right here. Well, hey, he didn't have it on. Him having a shirt out here is not a problem. His mama walks around trying to keep him clothed, and it don't it don't work. I can't keep shoes on him. <laughs> Let me tell y'all what he did yesterday. Okay, we it's raining yesterday. Storms. We watching the weather. Well, you know, later in the afternoon, probably one two o'clock. Ours was over with. I mean, it rained a while, but storms was gone. It had quit raining. It was kind of misty. Brody come out there with us, and I was like, look, you're going to have to get in the shed with me. I'm making pottery. I said, come on in here. And he said, no, I'm going in the house. So I stood there and watched him walk all the way up to the house, get up by the buggy. Well, I went on in the, in the shed, and I looked out the window, and I seen him up between the buggy and the house. So I thought, he's headed in. And I went on to making pottery. An hour later, I come in the house, and Michelle said, where's Brody? And I said, I thought he was in here with you. About that time, the front door opens. He had seen me coming in. He was soaking wet. He'd been out there slipping, sliding in a terse row out here that was holding water that was about that deep, and he was soaking wet. <laughs> Mama wasn't happy. She liked to come unhinged. Y'all know what unhinged is? You want to come inside with Mama? Ow. You want to come inside with Mama? Thank you for me. Come on. Dad, are you doing your laugh? Are you? What? Are you doing your laugh? No, I'm still talking to folks. Uh, that's all I wanted to do. Jeff, we had a picture just last week. It was a guy with his game camera had a bear, uh, black bear in uh, uh -huh. Kemper County picture. That was last week, matter of fact, I think. Last week or the week before. I don't know. I think I seen the picture last week, but the picture could have been from the week before. But um, I have personally found bear tracks back here. I've not seen a bear personally like with my own eyes but now i seen his tracks he was here in uh that was three years ago i was down there or two years i'll tell you when i seen his tracks when you go back and look at my camping video that uh one of my camping videos i think i filmed some of the tracks and i'm right back here behind my house <laughs> I'll have to tell that to Michelle, Diana. I'll have to tell that to her. Brody, we're going to fix you up. We're going to put your shirt on backwards and button it all the way up. That way you can't get it off. <laughs> you're going to stop your eye out with that thing. Then you're going to be walking around looking like a pirate. With eye patch on. Okay, she's now. You wait till I get through talking, which ain't going to be long. It's 943. We're going to quit right about 10 o'clock.
So we got about 15 more minutes. Why don't you go in there and get warmed up and, and, and you find your light? Yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do with this lightning bug? We're gonna turn him loose? Yeah. When you go... Huh? And then I'm turn up okay, you're going to turn him loose in a minute. No, there ain't no need keeping him in no jar all night. You go look for it. <laughs> he's, he's giving his mama orders in there in case y'all didn't catch all of that. He told her to go look for the light. Lord, Lord, Lord. Shanna, good, good to see you tonight. Have a good one. We, uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be on here long. I just wanted to get on here and and talk to y'all for a little bit. Thoughts on electroculture, where you put copper wire a certain way in the ground with garden plants. Well, Triton, I, I will say I firmly believe in electroculture. Um... Because like today, you go out here after we had a lightning storm yesterday and there's more green stuff popped out. There's trees budding out that wouldn't budding out yesterday. There's plants is taller. I, I've got two pokeweed plants. It's one's right here against the wall and one right over here that I've been watching as young shoots. I was going to cut them and do a cook poke salad here pretty quick because right now while these poke salad is young and tender is the best time to cook it and eat it. You wait like I normally do way over in the fall, it it's done got bugs on it and it's tough. It ain't as good. Right now it's it's good eating. You if you can identify it and I'm gonna probably do a video on cooking poke salad again. I have done several before um but I'm gonna do another one and um uh, they were about this tall yesterday. That one out there was. Today, it's this tall. That one over yonder is this tall now, and yesterday, it was about like that. So, they grew several inches overnight. It works. But now, to say you got to have copper wire and all, I think that is a stretch because I have got metal fence posts, drove all in my garden for staking this and staking that, and I think it works just about the same. So I have not just like studied electroculture as a thing, but I do know that when we have lightning storms and electricity in the air, coupled with the amount of water that we get, I, I firmly believe that the water with it plays a huge part. But yeah, after a after a thunderstorm, stuff will shoot up six inches. Now I can run water on it with a water hose, and it won't grow that much. So you can't say it's the water alone. But anyway, yeah, Brenda, he keeps me on my toes. He he does. But I do believe in the electricity helping the plants grow. So you know, I don't know about the the necessity of. Yeah copper and all that. Yeah, what's that big green light? What big green light? Me and Mom are trying to find it. Well, I've got two lights down in the shed, but there's one in there by that bookshelf or somewhere in there, ain't it? In my room. Anyway. I know where plenty of lights are. I was trying to keep him occupied. <laughs> Give him something to get his mind on. Well, I have messed up my chat. Yeah. <laughs> there y'all are. Tennessee Smokey. Yeah, we doing good. We uh we really didn't even have any bad weather here. Oh uh, now the night before not I guess night before last, we had a tornado come through south of Philadelphia. I had some uh seen several pictures on Facebook of people that had a lot of damage to their house. Tin blowed off, trees down, uh, 
damage to some homes and barns and things blowed over. I mean, there was a good bit of damage. So it wasn't like there was a tornado on the ground half mile wide just went through destroying everything. But there was one that, that come over, got close enough to do some damage. Uh, I heard some people say it was straight line winds, but with the fact it just being in a small path down there, I don't think it was straight line winds. So, um, but now as of yesterday, it never even got bad here. I think most everything got bad further south of us. So. Brody's down there at the chicken pens, what's distracting me, shining lights. I think everybody down around the coast. Now, I was on the phone with uh, Michael that you saw on here, Pork Chop, and he went to holler, I got to go, and there's a tree went down in his backyard while we were on the phone. But found out, though, it was just from straight line wind. It wasn't a tornado. So, uh, it, you know, there was... A lot of people around this area had damage, but as far as us here, we did good. What? We ain't gonna be done with your lights. Eric, uh, now the lightning bugs, it really hadn't got warm enough here for us to have a lot of lightning bugs. Last year, we had loads of them. So, now they wouldn't up here around the house as much. Cut that off. You blinded me. You hear me? Cut it off. You shining me in the face with it. Quit. He, uh... But anyway, we had a lot of lightning bugs down in the woods. If you rode down like these trails in the woods, they was just everywhere. So, I, that, it, I guess it depends on where you're at. Um, it's the same way like here with whippoorwills. I've not heard a whippoorwill yet. And I know some people in areas say they hear a bunch of them. So, you know, just in my area, it's a lot to do with the terrain and the habitat has changed for them. There's no open fields. Everything is, is growed up. And we don't have a lot of hay field right here in my area. There are some, but not like it used to be. Everything's in pine trees now. And then now it's all cut over and uh, not cleared out like a field. It's just a jungle, really. Briar thicket. Yeah, Smokey, we, we, we come through pretty good. Uh, and the Lord has kept his hand on us for the last several years. We've had several storms and tornadoes close by and, and not get us. In fact, you saw two or three years ago, or, well, year before last, one went right up this swamp up here. And me down there in the canoe, I showed a lot of the damage the following deer season when I was in there in squirrel season. There were a lot of trees down, so... um. So far this year, had not got bad yet, but now we've still got all of this month that every time it decides to rain, we'll have to duck and run for cover because it'll be a tornado in it somewhere. So that's just kind of how, how it is this time of year. We can't get a rain for the garden without tornadoes everywhere. So, And the problem with it is, is, is you can't see a tornado coming. Like up in the Midwest... You know, you can see a tornado coming for miles and miles. Well, here, if you see one, it's on you. The only way you're going to know it's coming is by word of mouth, you know, radar or broadcast and Facebook or whatever else. So when we have having bad weather, especially in the night, we stay on radar, stay on Facebook, keep up with what's going on if it's bad. Um, yesterday... I really kind of just quit watching it because I seen that everything was going south of us and I just kind of, you know, I, I didn't, wouldn't worry, wouldn't concern and let it go. So we'll, we'll probably get our fair share of worry for, for before April and, and 
first of May's over with. Crawfish, yeah, we have we have a good many alligators now. You know, when I was a kid growing up, we never had no alligators here. In the last 10 years, they have started populating this area. Now, Ross Barnett Reservoir down there, when I film fishing down there this weekend, we will definitely see alligators. Uh, we saw one uh, the other day. The last time I was down there, I filmed a short clip of one, but, uh, and then when me and Jimmy was in the river, there was a lot there, so they, there's way more down there than they are up here behind my house in this part of the swamp, but there are alligators up here. Most of them up here are five, six foot long. It's not like it's full of, you know, eight and ten foot alligators, but... We, we are not allowed to hunt them or kill them. Uh, now, those people that do kill them, obviously, um, slip and shoot ones, get them on a line or whatever. You know, I've heard of people catching them on their trot lines or limb hooks or something, depending on what they were baiting with. But uh, I hung one bass fishing with a frog last year. And I finally broke my hook off in his mouth, so he left with a hook hanging out of his top lip. He was about three foot long, and I did not see him. He came up out from under some lily pads and grabbed my frog I was jerking across the top last year so. Smokey, I hadn't made any uh, any knives in a while. I have got a couple of blades that I have ground and I need to get put together because uh, some of them I have promised to some people and a couple of them are gifts that I wanted to send to somebody. I just, until the garden is somewhat underway, I'm probably not going to get into the knife making too heavy. Um... One thing I have started filming entirely too much, I guess. But Dad, I found the rat. Well, go get him. I found nothing. Kill him. <laughs> Where's your BB gun? In the shed. You ain't got a slingshot. Hmm. Boy ain't got a slingshot. We're gonna have to fix that, ain't we? I tried to hook him up with a slingshot here not long ago. He didn't like it. I still have it. <laughs> Pascagoula, Victoria Trotton. Nice to have you with us. Diana Houston. Yeah, Trotton, now we watch Ryan Hall whenever the stuff's going on. He does about as good a job of, of covering it as anything. Now, we've got a weatherman that I like to watch here local that is in the northern, uh, up around Tupelo or somewhere. And most of the people here watch the people out of Meridian. Uh, and there's a guy that does a Facebook broadcast here out of uh, out around Meridian that does a pretty good job of keeping up with the goings on of stuff. Uh, but this little guy up here out of Meridian, he's he's funny, little redheaded guy, and he gets excited. He's fun to watch, but he does a good job of keeping covered and uh, takes it serious, and, and uh, we watch him some, but he's I have to turn my antenna up that way to watch him on on the uh, watch him on TV on the antenna. I don't know that he's I think he's on Facebook too somewhere. Michelle watches him. Um, and I can't think of his name. But I need to get my antennas hooked back up. They both disconnected right now from the TV, but Victoria Trotton, uh, first time here. Hey, 
Uh, yeah, Smokey, I have got I have got a lot of people messaging me right now about knives, and I I I need to get I could use the money. <laughs> I need to get to making some. So Jason, that may be who he is, Matt. Something like that. I, Michelle keeps up with him. She can tell me who he is. She watches him more than I do. He's the one that made it to Jimmy Kimmel, I think, where he, he scolded his his part of his crew on camera one night and told them to get off their phone, pay attention, and it went viral. Uh, he's the guy. We were watching it when that happened. Uh, but, yeah, I, that may be who he is. Cindy, you are on the money. That is right where she's talking about. Yes. Pascagoula, where the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in the sleepy little town of Pascagoula. <laughs> yeah. Old Ray Stevens had it going on when he got to talking about that. Deadly tarantula girl. The chicken breeding is not doing very well at all. Uh, I, in fact, I had a guy call me, and I, he's probably good and mad at me now. He's called three different days, and I, my phone does not work when I'm inside my house or in my shed. If you don't stop, you're going to make a mess. Because I have a metal building with that fallback insulation, so a phone ringing, the only way you're going to get up with me, if anybody's trying to call me or get up with me, is via the internet. I can get a text message provided you have an iPhone, and I get it through iMessage. If you're trying to text me from a, another device that's not using I, or you have your iMessage turned off, I'm not going to get it till like late in the evening when I come out of there. Uh, or if I come out at dinner, it, it, you know, pops up. And I miss all these phone calls. So, y'all, it is not that, hey, I'm just ignoring people's phone calls. It's like way over late in the evening when a voicemail pops up and says, hey, you had a missed call today. And I, you know, by then I'm busy headed, got stuff going on. I ain't got time to sit down and talk on the phone at that point. So, you know, but I've got a guy, he's wanting to come buy some chickens. And y'all, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm threatening selling my my game chickens, like some of my, my mule train pairs. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm tired of fooling with them. I don't make a lot of chicken videos. I don't, it's too much controversy with them. Uh, and the black have not laid any eggs. I had one black baby and I went out there and it was out of the Mac Rays. It wasn't out of the I Am Samani's. But I had one baby hatched in the, the Mac Ray pen and two days later, one of, it was dead. The, if you leave them out there, they'll kill it. So... I, I should have got it out and put it somewhere, but I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm tired of trying to breed and raise chickens because I've got too many to feed. I'm Right now, I'm getting more eggs than I can pick up, and I want to get down to where I've just got a pen of chickens that I gather eggs from. I'm, I'm tired of raising chickens. It's, it's overwhelming. All of I've got a whole row of pens that all needs new doors built on it. And, and I don't have time to do everything that I need to do. And the chickens, I'm not able to see after that many chickens as well as they ought to be seen after. And I am backing off of them. You'd... You'd have to email me or uh, or either through my Facebook page. There's a Spirit of the Outdoors Facebook page. If you're on Facebook, you can message me through it. Let me know who you are. Um, because I have a lot of people asking about buying chickens, and I just... I, right now, all of my stuff's in a mess, 
and it's been raining and everything's muddy. The pins all need redoing, and I don't, I just don't like film and that kind of stuff. I, I, I could better handle a smaller amount of chickens. So I'm not trying to raise. I hadn't turned the incubator on. I hadn't fired the brooder coop up, and it is because I had rather fish than I had. But you can email me at justinpeden at gmail.com and, and, and get up with me that way. Uh, and Because I have a lot of people that is ask about shipping them somewhere, and I am not going to try to, I'm not even going to attempt to try to ship a chicken somewhere. I just, I know they do it, but I'm not interested in it. Yeah, Smokey, I, I've got, I've got, uh, crawfish is wanting, uh, you wanting that, uh, Ulu, or the, are you wanting uh, the Jonah knife? The Jonah knife is the hit for most people, and it, and I understand because it is a very practical knife. And my problem ain't building the knife in the sheath is easy. It's the grinding. You have to grind those blades slowly to make a good blade. Because uh, if you get it too hot, it loses its temper. And then you've got to quench it. Which, really, I could probably come out ahead at this point. If I brought one of those gas forges over here... To not worry about burning it and just grind it fast, slick it out like I want it, and then heat it, quench it in oil, and draw them back down, and, and probably do that as fast as it's as me grinding it slowly like I'm doing. But the grinding it out is the biggest problem. It's peeding, um, p as in Paul or power or um, to make sure you understand P and not T uh, P-E-D-E-N J-U-S-T-I-N P-E-D-E-N at gmail a lot of people if you're trying to say P some of them think you said T and it's and I realize it's my country accent it is difficult to cipher twixt the two. Big Tory, you ain't the only one that's got to go. Y'all, it is 10 o'clock. We got to get off of here. Um, Brody is wanting to go have a, a rat killing. And I do have to thin out on what we're doing is going down to the chicken pen and getting rid of some rats. That they, I got rats everywhere. Rock Stan has been down there two days digging around back there because I moved some stuff around and she can almost get to where they're nesting under some treated post that I piled at the back of the coop. So anyway... So yeah, you want a patch knife, crawfish? I I have got I've got a pile of them. I have got to make at some point. Most of them now I am putting. Um, I had Osage on a lot of them, and I can do Osage, but I don't even know at this point what all I have got left for wood down there to make handles out of. So I normally what I do. At this point, I have got about three that I have got to get made that I want to gift people, and they're offering to buy them, but they've been generous to me, and I want to give them a knife because they have gave me valuable stuff, and I want to make those first. Once I get those three or four made and sent out, I'm going to start making a few this, that, and the other handles that will be the patch knife and the Jonah knife. And when I get them made, I, I normally just put them either on my Facebook or on the Etsy store and, and it be first come first serve. That is what I have been doing because the taking orders got so overwhelming and it's, it's, 
the the what d puts a damper on it is when you promise out a whole bunch of knives, well, then you can't even make anything that I want to make because I've got to work on Well, if I'm going to make one, I need to make this and I need to make that, and it becomes like a job, that, then I don't get to go out there and just be creative. I, it's, well, I got to make what this person wants, and that ain't no fun. I like to make what I want to make. What, what I'm inspired by and be creative. And that's what drives me and motivates me when it's a whole lot of, well, well, somebody wants this. Well, it's a good knife. I want them to have that, but it's not fun to make anymore. So, uh, but we'll get them made. Uh, I mean, I enjoy making them when I'm making something else for somebody, but it gets monotonous, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But I'm going, I'm going to get down there at some point and take a couple of days and try to make several. Um, and I may wind up bringing one of the gas forges over here. Um, I love my coal forge, but I am about out of coal. I don't really have a way to get coal. Um, so I may move my coal forge somewhere. I want it. I, I'm wanting to forge out a meat cleaver and I when I do that I'll film it um but I'm wanting to forge a, me a, a big giant like a big hawking meat cleaver for my cooking videos because I my tr I want my thing to be up here when I'm cooking is to have these big giant knives that I'm cutting stuff with obviously you can use a kitchen knife you know probably work better but for the nostalgia and the look and everything that I do, I want, I mean, my Bowie knife that I use a lot, I like filming, cooking with it, cutting up stuff. So I want one of these big, giant meat cleavers. And I, I'm going to forge one out of a lawnmower blade is what I'm going to do. So anyway, uh, thank all of you tonight for joining us and hanging out. I know it was spur of the moment. There'll be a lot of people upset that they missed it. Uh, but... I, I, I'm not going to get to be here tomorrow night. I'm going to be filming fishing tomorrow night. I will be putting out you guys a video of me pulling the limb hooks up. will come out tomorrow at some point. It's filmed. It's uploaded. I just got to turn it on. Um, and then I don't know what when I will put what next video out. In fact, I'm probably going to have to go ahead and film just in time tomorrow just to make sure I have it filmed and ready to load for Sunday because I'm going to be gone all day Saturday. So the stuff I'm filming tomorrow and Saturday will probably be next week. So we'll play it out, see how it works. But thank you all for watching. Good night, everybody. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.